Before we get into the picks, just look back at the comments for my question in week seven. As of week six, who is the team that you guys would consider as your dark horse? We had a plethora of people pick multiple teams, but here are my favorite for each team. On featured games last week, straight up I went 3-1 and one. <laughs> against the spread I went 2-2 two and two. <laughs> and for over under I went 4-0. <laughs> Any week above 500 is a great week and going 4-0 and over under is excellent. Also, going 10-2 and two over under in the last 3 weeks is pretty damn good. Since this is the Halloween special, this week's question will skew away from the normal format. What are you guys afraid of? I want to get to know some of my audience, so I think this is the perfect way to do so. What better way to introduce this question than Halloween? The only thing that freaks me out to this day is Reagan from The Exorcist. I was terrorized by her as a child as she spun her head around 360 degrees and walked upside down, down a flight of stairs, and I still can't sit through all 122 minutes of it. Now, I think it's time we get into the games. Our first game we will be looking at looks at the Minnesota Vikings traveling to the Chicago Bears. The Bears are coming off their bye week and Matt Forte isn't happy with his team's performance over the first six weeks. On the other hand, Adrian Peterson has been reviving this Vikings unit to score more points this season while their defense does just the opposite. Minnesota's defense is giving up 17.0 points per game, tied with the Broncos for the second best in the league. This defense is definitely flying under the radar and is vastly underrated. but. Will this be the game that the Bears finally turn their chances around? I don't think so. Divisional matchups always come down to the wire and usually stick within three points. So the two and a half point spread is perfect for me to pull the trigger on the Vikings. I also think 42 total points is too low. So let's take the over on that as well. The Vikings are definitely going to be tested on the road this week. Don't ask me why I'm doing a game that features two teams that have at least five losses in the first seven weeks, but I have no faith in the Ravens whatsoever. I don't care if this game is in Baltimore, the San Diego Chargers have the NFL's number one overall offense in yards per game. We have to take the Chargers in this one, even with the over 50.5 total points. The only thing that is holding the Chargers from doing well this season is their defense. Joe Flacco and Justin Forsett will light up their defense and put on a show for the home crowd, but the Chargers will prevail with a win. We have quite the opposite situation here for Game 3. This game will send one of these undefeated teams home packing with a loss. The Denver Broncos are getting it done to win, while I feel the Packers have been doing the same thing over the past few weeks. Both of these teams have had trouble putting teams away when it counted, but we're still lucky enough to win those games. Something just seems off in Green Bay these past three weeks, while Peyton Manning is looking more like the Eli Manning of 2013. I think that this game has to go to the more balanced team, in the Green Bay Packers. I feel this game will be very close, but the Packers will win by a field goal. I also like this game to go over 46, because both QBs will be slinging it. Don't worry Broncos fans, being 6-1 isn't that bad. Let's jump right into the fan favorites. First things first, you can see my record for the lock and upset of the week under my icon in the top right corner. For my lock of the week, I'm taking the New England Patriots to beat the Miami Dolphins. Now, I do think the Dolphins will cover, but no one is stopping the Patriots this week of their undefeated season. They're going to shove their record right down Roger Goodell's throat, and it all starts on Thursday, taking care of a division rival at home. The upset pick of the week, I'm feeling the Oakland Raiders to upset the New York Jets. The Jets looked incredible last week, going into New England and only losing by a touchdown. Ryan Fitzpatrick kept the mistakes to a minimum, but Tom Brady just proved to be too good for them. But with the game being in Oakland, I don't think the Jets can go in there and beat them when they are doing really well this season. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. 
Last week in the Fantasy Football League, I ended up beating the number one team in the league, the undefeated Mole Mirrors. My players put up huge numbers last week, including Arian Foster, Todd Gurley, and Jordan Reed. But sadly, Arian Foster will now be released by my coaching skills for someone new, though I do have Eddie Lacy to back him up. Next week, I will look to continue my three-win win streak when I take on Gavin OC4. A quick update from my ESPN Eliminator Challenge. John Harrington, 78, still continues his hot streak, but we are waiting to see if Half Moon's picks will stay alive this week. If he stays alive this week, he's only one game behind John Harrington, 78. Sad thing is, everyone else lost in Week 7 and are now two games behind our fearless leader. If you like this video and want more like it, then be sure to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. Follow me on all my social media outlets. The links are in the description down below. See you guys in Week 9.